Um, okay, it says recording. Man, I hope I'm doing this right. Okay, um, so good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. Um, I know this isn't the most riveting thing you could be doing right now, but it is important, whether you're a student or faculty. And um, on behalf of the SA team, we just wanted to thank you for recognizing that and actually taking time out of your day to be a part of this. So um, without further ado, let's get the show on the road. I call this meeting to order. The time is 12.01 p.m. Uh, so yeah, as Natalie said, uh, we will begin with roll call um, for the purposes of taking our minutes. The secretary of the meeting, general manager, Natalie, just need to know uh, who's in attendance. So if you're a student at this meeting, please put your full name and program area down in the chat so we can have it recorded. Okay. Um, we will proceed then with the approval of the agenda, which you can, which you should be able to all access through email. I sent an email this morning with it attached. Um, so if anyone would like to propose any additions or amendments to the agenda, then please indicate so now. Okay. Not hearing or seeing anything. Um, I therefore move that the agenda be approved as it is presented. Can I get a second? Seconded by Amanda, thank you. Any opposed or abstained? All right, let's move on then. Um, da, 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 da. Okay, so we'll proceed with the item of business, of which there's only one. So yeah, very extensive, I know. Um, we'll start off with a brief rundown of the bylaws. So. Um, please refrain from making uh, like comments or suggestions until we're finished uh, the quick run through. Um, upon that time, we'll open the floor up to a discussion period where anyone can address any comments or concerns that they have. Um, but before we begin, um, I just want to say a big thank you to a couple of people specifically for helping us get through the grueling process that is bylaw revision, uh, namely Natalie, our general manager, um, Jonas Bistrom, our VP external, our events coordinator, Taylor Costelli, and the student, Sarah Heimer, who is here. Thanks, Sarah. Um, yeah, we spent a ridiculous amount of time in the summer drafting up these new bylaws, and it was primarily Natalie who got them uh, tidied up and in their current state. So just wanted to make mention of that before we move on. Um, so yeah, um, if you have the proposed bylaws open in front of you, you can just follow me along this process. Um, this will just be a basic rundown of the highlights, uh, some of the highlights of the bylaws, because we only have so much time. Um, keep in mind that the main reason that we are introducing these new bylaws is that the current ones we're using, a aka the ones from 2012, just um, don't necessarily reflect what the essay looks like anymore. Um, we uh, reflect the way we operate, I mean. Um, we've obviously expanded and developed over the years to the point where we need to update our bylaws. Um, we're not necessarily like introducing anything like the main objective is to expand, not reinvent the bylaws, so to say. So a lot of um, what you see in these um, proposed bylaws, are their roots are in the 2012 ones. Just wanted to make that clear. Um, yeah, and um, I also wanted to make note of the fact that these have been vetted by our lawyers. So aside from the executive team, they have been reviewed um, by legal professionals. Um, and this has been like a months long process, right? Like I made mention back, like this was started up back in the summer. So we took some, we've taken a lot of time uh, actually like considering these, that this wasn't like a last minute thing. So yeah, anyways. Um, so if you open up the bylaws in front of you right now, we just start off with definitions um, for a lot of the terms here, just so if anyone is reading this for the first time, they can get a sense of what's going on. Um, a few of these sections are, like I said earlier, they're really just expansions or like re-clarifications of what's going on in the 2012 bylaws, um, especially the qualifications for membership section. But it's not really anything we, that we've drastically, drastically altered or like introduced. Um, but uh, so moving down to section 6.6, .6, um, where it details like all the positions, here you can see the clause where I have proclaimed myself emperor. I'm just joking. Um, kudos to whoever invented implied powers, right? Um, so we obviously expanded the scope of these roles quite a bit um, from what they're currently at in the bylaws. Um, but we, you know, we edited through this to make sure um, that we weren't being tedious, um, that these bullet points were things that are fundamental and an actual like essential core to that person's job. Um, we moved all the day-to-day -day minutia and procedures into the policy manual. Um, what is completely new is that we've taken out the VP finances position and we inserted the general manager one. 
So um, in the 2012 bylaws, it doesn't um, explicitly state that there is a VP uh, finances position, but there does state that there is a treasurer position. And some of those responsibilities have essentially been transferred onto the general manager and some onto me and uh, to Amanda and other executive board members. Um, and yeah, I know you've um, all heard a lot about the general manager these past couple of months. Um, I've been explaining in emails and in Chronicle articles what her role is and why we hired her. Um, section 6.6.5 in the proposed bylaws, it's an essential repeat of that. Uh, probably the greatest asset that comes with the general manager is a feeling of continuity with the SA. So students come and go, we can potentially have an entire new executive uh, team one year, but Natalie will stay on. She'll be here as a sort of like, <laughs> Fingers crossed, Natalie will stay on. She'll be here as a sort of guiding role, uh, establishing precedents, like um, clarifying precedents, I mean, handling some of the tedious things that sometimes the rest of just rest of us just happen to be too busy to deal with. Um, Natalie doesn't have to deal with midterms or essays or anything like that, lucky her. Um, so moving down to section seven, this is also a new part of um, the bylaws. So this is um, the general council is essentially, you can sort of look at it as like an expanded full board or sort of like a student council where you have representatives um, for, for student groups. So like academic groups. So um, for example, currently right now we have ed students being represented through EDSA and the business students being represented through the LBA. Um, both of them have a place for meetings and the ability to voice their concerns on behalf of like their program. But the science students don't have this, the art students don't have this, the music students don't have this. We want them to, and we want, we basically want additional representation for all students. And step one for making that happen is actually cementing the existence of a general council, a student council in our bylaws, so that the essay will literally constitutionally need to have a representative body in existence. Uh, moving along, and again, I'm just skimming through this. Oh, uh, section nine, which is standing in ad hoc committees. Natalie, do you want to walk through that real quick? Yeah, so just further to what Adrian was saying, um, we haven't really changed anything major. We've just simply added this on to reflect that we have many different uh, kind of standing committees or groups within the institution that may work under, like within the Students Association in a kind of a collaborative way. So these groups could establish themselves uh, with independent terms of reference uh, in how they operate. And, um, but financially, basically it's showing the relationship to our student association. So the ability to access uh, funds um, that we, sorry, the ability to access funds from the Students Association and therefore reporting back into the Student Association on the use of those funds. Um, so what you see here uh, in these three points is meant to be general, so that any of the committees uh, standing in ad hoc established under the authority granted by the bylaws are just mainly responsible to, to CUSA for the fulfillment of the objectives and purposes which they were established, so they have to do what they said they're gonna do, and um, the proper management of their finances. They'd submit a budget for their, their operations. Um, that we would create a terms of reference that we would ad adopt to our policy and procedure manual. So just outlining how we would operate with them and that they would present a budget at the AGM and a report of their activities at our general council. So it's just talking a little bit of the layout of the governance of that. Um, so we're working with different student groups to look at how that might uh, grow and establish over the next year. Um, and uh, are there any questions regarding the standing committees? and how that's outlined. You're welcome to put it in the chat if you're more comfortable or... And I just wanted to um, mention further to what Adrian was saying regarding the general counsel. We haven't made any specific um, declarations in our bylaws about who those members are, just that we will look at six as a number of directors that we would like to add to our general counsel. So there'd be the, the four executives, the president, the VP internal, the VP external and the student services, and six student directors elected or appointed. And the appointed piece is in reference to LBA and EDSA, um, since they do an election within their own uh, faculty association groups. So those presidents or whoever they, um, whoever they decide to uh, put forward to sit on council on their behalf has already been an elected person in that group. The other four directors 
um, could be a first year rep, could be, um, could be just people interested. We've talked a lot with student service, uh, sorry, student life with the idea of having um, more advocacy based uh, positions. So we would elect general directors and then they would take on kind of an area of interest, let's say mental health or let's say EDI as two examples, but it could be really anything where they, they kind of act as our representative in those groups uh, university-wide because our, our key role here is advocacy and representation, right? So those were some examples. I just wanted to clarify that. And then as you can see below as well, the general manager, our copy, our level coffee house rep, our publications rep, um, marketing and any kind of staff member of the student association are all non-voting members, but sit on council. And finally, we've talked to student life about having a student life representative sit as an advisor, again, non-voting to help create some continuity between the activities of student life and the activities of student association and really just great communication link. So I hope that, I hope that adds some further clarification of those pieces. Um, these are the main things that have changed. Um, as Mark, who's joined us as a, a past uh, SA executive um, can attest to, these are, are longer. Um, you'd be surprised, shockingly shorter than most uh, student association bylaws, but still they are a little bit more robust. Um, when I spoke to our lawyer, we talked a little bit, like he said, there was nothing in here that was too specific or he, well, he actually gave us feedback on those areas that might've been too specific that we generalized a little more, um, that we, we wouldn't be too tied to. So for example, under section eight in elections, we talked a little bit about kind of what our dates are. We wanna establish those as governing pieces, but not specific and how many counselors we have. That may be our only piece that gets a little tricky is that we've, we've listed six directors, right? And if we can't fill those positions, that could get a little bit tricky. Um, but other than that, they're meant to, bylaws are meant to be kind of the how we are governed piece. And then our policy and procedure manual, which we can update as required in our executive board and general council meetings, those are the what, the, the details of the terms of reference, the how we run an election, and that's where we can change items accordingly as we grow or change or as we add in different groups. So um, are there any questions regarding the bylaws, concerns, anything anyone would like to bring forward? Say you guys weren't able to hire enough people or like bring enough people on, what would happen in that situation? <laughs> if we had vacant positions, is that what you mean? Um, so we've kind of talked briefly in here about the vacancies, uh, talking about um, if we have a vacant position, we can vote them in at a future meeting. So uh, I think it's under section 6.7. So in the case of a vacant uh, executive board position prior to February 1st, the duties of that position may be shared between two or more officers of the executive board. As for the directors, you'll have to give me a second. That's a really good question. Um, the general counsel. It's funny when you look at these kind of documents for a really long time, it starts to all make sense to you until you step away from it and look at it again. <laughs> I just wanna double check. It's under section seven. Hmm. Yeah, I'm taking a look on it right now. It's on the um, so yeah, so, find the on screen. You know, I think Sam, that's a really great uh, thing you've highlighted. So I think we need to make sure we reflect that in ours. So we talk a little bit about by elections, but I, when we discussed this, and we didn't. Um, we talked about the six general council directors are elected or appointed by general council at the start of the academic year. So I suppose technically we could appoint uh, according to these bylaws, we could appoint directors in our future general council meetings. So let's say we only got, 
So two of them are already appointed from the different faculties. So let's say we only got two other people interested and we were vacant with two, kind of be up to the executive and the other general council members to try and encourage and uh, invite others to participate. And we could vote them in at a future meeting date. But that is, um, it's a really good highlight that we don't, we didn't highlight the vacancy piece. Yeah, well, looks like we have um, a topic for our potential first amendment, so. <laughs> Um, oh yeah, and the yeah, like the last section um, here in the bylaws is about amendments. So like, don't don't get me wrong. Like by and large, this document is in its final form. But um, you know, by, bylaws um, bylaws can be amended over time. They they're meant to be um, long lasting, but they're they're meant to be hard to change. But they can be changed. So that is something that we can do. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, and um, if anyone has any other questions, if you if your questions are things like casual grammatical changes or clarifications that you would like to request, then I ask that you just leave those as comments. But if you, um, yeah, if you have something pressing like what Sam just said, then yeah, please feel free to speak up. Just keep in mind that we only have an hour reserved for this meeting, so please keep it brief if you can. Are there any other kind of key things that in your review of them you noted were missing anything that was um, like the, like the vacancy piece for the directors anything else that you noted was maybe too verbo verbose or too specific that might get us might be a challenge in the future that we might want to consider removing also let us know if there are any specific sections that you want us to go over This might just me be playing like worst case scenario in my head, but if you go to section 5.4.3, um, yeah, it says there at the end, meetings may be held without notice if quorum is met. And I guess, yeah, like I was saying, worst case scenario, say one of the people on the executive board is sort of um, like not in the inner group and the other three are sort of like in collusion, then they could like technically meet officially and get things done like without that person having any voice because if they, if they can meet quorum like the point below they have three members they can meet so if that person is um like trying to represent some group and the other people are trying to get things done without them they can like do that so I and this is actually yeah like yeah <laughs> man that's a good idea i need to write this down i'm just joking um yeah, no, that's a very good point. Actually, that's um, technically an impeachable offense, actually. <laughs> um, so if in the case where that does happen, then yeah, you have the right to, um, any student really has the right to initiate like um, potential impeachment uh, scenario. This is also potentially one of those moments where Natalie, our general manager, becomes really useful because, right, she is She's there on the sidelines. She can observe this going on and then she can just like step in, sort of be like, hey guys, what's going on here? Um, I don't know, Natalie, if there are any other breaks, um, uh, checks you want to identify here that could prevent a scenario like that from happening. Yeah, I think, uh, I think that's a really good catch, actually. I think it's just simple enough to delete that whole sentence and then we don't have to worry about it. So or, I would or what you could do to fix it is instead of um, just having it, yeah, what you could do is if you go down to 0 0.5, 0 0.6.3, you said that the meeting minutes are available by written request, but if the meeting is secret, the other person that was left out doesn't actually know to request those meeting minutes because they don't know that the meeting occurred. So instead of having it by written request, you could just send out the meeting minutes like all the time, like even though they don't ask for it. That way they know if they met, I mean, I guess they wouldn't want to send out the meeting minutes if it was supposed to be secret, but yeah. No, I think in, in 5.6.3, that last piece there and made available to the membership by written a written request that means if a, a student of of kings would like to know what happened at the meeting they can make a request okay. written request to receive a copy of those minutes if it's not somewhere okay so it's not applying to the executive board then yeah yeah but i do think uh, i do think you made a really good point i think we just delete that sentence and it removes that issue altogether i have another point i was just looking at this here and uh under minutes um 
as far as like, unless I'm skipping something, it doesn't say that minutes need to be approved at the next meeting, which is something that I believe it should say. Um, I think that's general rules of uh, Robert's rules that you uh, approved the previous minutes. I don't think it has to be stated. Okay. If that makes sense. That's just sure. common practice. Um, and Megan, thank you, by the way, for joining us today. I thank you for your note. I saw that in the comments that the student life representative is a student representative to be held either by a hired student worker or student leader, not a student life full time staff member. Yes, um, that is a good clarification. You can if you want to. Um, <laughs> I think your schedule is a little busy enough. I'm sure, um, maybe. You'd love to come to our meetings. <laughs> oh, no, 100%. They're very riveting, riveting events. Um, FYI, I can't normally see the comments while I'm, sh I'm sharing screens, but Natalie can. So if there's something really pressing that I happen to miss, just stop me in my tracks. Okay, I will scroll back up to the... Um, contents, table of contents section. So if there's anything else that you guys want to address, then please uh, make note of it. Um, actually, Adrian, now that Jonas brought forward the minutes, I just noticed an inconsistency. So um, the secretary of Tegusa shall be an active member or the general manager. And then you mm -hmm. go to 6.3.1, the general manager who will serve as secretary. I think I'll add um, or a point one as required. Uh, I, don't, I think Certainly. it's important that we ensure that there could be another one. <laughs> this is these little things that you uh, you miss. Yeah. After the uh, that's the same thing with uh, what we did for like, um, I think one of these clauses stated like the president shall act as chair. And I'm like, what if I'm not there? Like, does that mean that there can't be a chair? Like, and I think we decided, yeah, may the president may devolve these roles onto someone else if like necessary or whatever. So it's just little tedious things like that. I also had a question about the appointing of the student directors onto the general council. Yeah, so, what is that? Um, uh, several places, you, one place is 7.2.5. Um, no. Yeah, so I know that you mentioned before that the that the word appointed is supposed to apply only to the the bodies like the um, the school of business by which the election process occurs by some other mechanism, and then once that person is like, you know, comes in on their behalf, but if that isn't actually explicitly stated. So technically, by the way that it is now, you could just appoint all six, and that could pose problems if say a certain interest group wants to pass certain things in the, in the council. And then you could just, the, the executive board could just appoint all people that agree with them instead of having those people be elected. So maybe being a bit more specific as to who can be appointed and who has to be elected. Do you think it might sound better to say four student directors elected by the membership and um, two student directors appointed by the general council from EDSA and LBA. I, my concern is that we make that very specific then in our bylaws. I think that my, I, I totally see what you're saying. Um, I'm trying to think of how we can keep it general enough so that if there are changes with LBA or EDSA mm -hmm. that we're not tied to that. Right. So maybe possibly what you could do is just remove the word appointed altogether and just say that everything has to be elected by whatever mechanism, by whatever group, but they have to be elected instead of appointed. I like that. Okay. We'll go with that then. Thank you, Jonna. Well, not whatever group. Because no. if it's the executive board, that's the same thing as appointing, but you, <laughs> you know what I mean. Uh, the, I think that the, uh, the challenge would be to ensure that the... Um, Kind of what Sam was saying, how we want to make sure we're acknowledging vacancy in the process for that, correct? So if we're, if we're so not. So how about if, if no one runs for the position and no one can be elected, and maybe after a month out of the first, like at the end of, end of September, or October, then they can be appointed. Yeah, I like that. So I think what we will do is. Um, 
where it says vacating office and removal of general counsel directors on 7.5. It talks about how someone would be uh, vacating their position. What I might add here to 7.5.4 is uh, in the case of a vacancy. The general counsel may appoint uh, up to one month after elections. The general counsel will appoint a director to a position um, through a, a majority vote in council. So keep in mind the, the intention behind that would be that there's still an accountability piece with the general council members all having to agree to that person. So we don't have, like you suggested, a group that's trying to get, you know. A certain voice on council. Does that make sense? Okay, I'm going to start putting these discuss, discuss amongst yourselves. I'm thinking the one month might be slightly restrictive to put in. Okay. Do you have another recommendation, do you think, if we just... Well, just in the sense that you never know what happens throughout any given school year. Someone leaves or something. Yeah. Uh, no. But but um, you can. F yeah, I think in bylaws it's generally phrased uh, that a a position is elected. How do I say that? Uh, that the primary means is an election. Of, 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 sorry. Yeah, an election. And uh, if not, then it is appointed. You can do sort of put a hierarchy in there. So how would you phrase I mean, that, sorry? Sorry, did that make sense or no? No, that did. So in the case of a vacancy, uh, a director vacancy. And um, then it would just be implied that there would be a reasonable amount of time given for any people that are interested in the position to run for it. Yeah. In the case of a director vacancy, the general counsel uh, can appoint a member to the position by majority. Does that make sense, people? I think so. Okay. I'm just trying to type out my amendments. <laughs> Here, I think I, yeah, let me just type that out. Are there any other thoughts? I'm just checking the chat here. Thank you, Adrian. Yep. Uh, I have a question. So yep. in 6.7.3, which is the top of page 11, Adrian, um, it says, in the case of a vacant executive board position prior to February 1st, the duties of that position may be shared by two or more uh, officers of executive board until such a time as a by-election can be held. Uh, basically, my question is, what happens after February 1st? Here, let me just... Um... Sorry, the full thing wasn't coming up. I had it blocked by something. So after February 1st, that would, yeah. we can be more specific about it. You're right. I think after February 1st, what typically would be done is that position would be continued to be shared between two officers if there's no by-election. So I think that's just yeah. a matter of timing. So after February, you only have a couple of months to the end of term. Yeah. Um, so I, I think if I remember correctly, where we got that from was um, tends to be a common date, I guess, that other uh, associations use as far as kind of not going through the process of a by-election after that yeah. point. Yeah, the idea of it is like, yeah, like Natalie said, you only have a few weeks left of that administration. So really theoretically, what's the point of a by-election when we can just resolve it easily by appointing someone or just having it yeah, shared by two or more officers rather than 
have to deal with the hassle of organizing another last minute by election because that person's only really going to be in that position for a couple weeks at best. Are there any other um, parts that seem contradictory or Adrian and I and the other executives have looked at this so many times we're probably not yeah, at, at some point you hit a threshold, it all just becomes the same. I had something else. Um, yeah, it's, go it's, ahead. A, it's, a, it's a bit more minor. It's yeah. uh, uh, page 12, uh, 7.6.2. Um, and this is probably something you can put into another document. Um, but it says, upon failure to perform the specified duties and responsibilities of their position, and then these duties and responsibilities aren't outlined. Is it just to show up and vote? Um, I'm not sure. That, that is of the student directors. So you're asking uh, what specifically those. Right, yeah, so they can, they can get dismissed if they don't do their duties and responsibilities, but what are those duties and responsibilities? So that's outlined in 7.3. The duties of the director shall include. So are you saying it's a little too vague? It's not specific enough of, um, to outline that? No, you know what, that's like, no, that's probably okay. That makes sense. And I think that there's an element of judgment that has to be used in that, right? And I can, I hear what you're saying. See, this is where it gets a little tricky if you're too specific. You wanna have a means to be able to um, show governance of your directors and officers and how things get, you know, vacated or, how those positions are held, but at the same time, if you get too specific, it gets a little ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Then it becomes a policy manual. Uh, Mark, I know you've been through this before, this whole process. Is there anything that in that realm of too specific that kind of tweaked for you that may give us a, a challenge? You know, I have to admit, I haven't looked at it in detail. Oh, no, that's fine. No. Mm -hmm. But so far, not. And since, since you told me that you've used that idea of, okay, let's try not to get too specific because we don't want to tie future hands. Uh, since mm -hmm. you've had that in mind, I don't know. It sounds um, affirming that you're aware of that. Yeah, I mean, like, bylaws are a constitutional framework, right? And like any constitution, it's meant to be flexible. And the more the more um, requirements or responsibilities listed that you have, the more likely it is that it will um, become defunct, right? So, yeah, definitely, we want to keep it as like foundational as possible. It would be great if, um, you know, note to self, Jonas, if uh, ASEC, the, the kind of larger group there, found a way to template bylaws for associations so that they had a general kind of feel to them that was consistent across the board because it's very, very different uh, from group to group. I'll definitely take note of that. It would certainly be an interesting uh, opportunity for them. Okay, so I am just highlighting here the three, and tell me if I've missed something, please. I have three uh, amendments to make uh, that I will add to the motion that Adrian will make to approve these bylaws. So the first amendment would be the removal of, from 5.4.3, that meetings may be held without notice if quorum is met. So we will remove that sentence. Under 6.3.1, general manager will serve as secretary or appoint one as required. We will change it to that statement. And uh, the addition of 7.5.4, in the case of a director vacancy, the general counsel can appoint a member to the position by majority vote. Are there any other that I have missed? 
Just a quick one, Natalie, and it's again, it's a yeah. grammatical change, so it is a little uh, tedious, but uh, 6.3.1, just um, correct general manger to manager. Oh, well, I'm changing the whole sentence, so I'll make sure that's noted. Okay, perfect. I just don't want someone to like go, oh, theoretically, like there has to be a manger that serves as secretary, not a manager. Someone wants to like really like take that to the court by. and just like, People who interpret con constitutions literally are just like, ah, frustrating. I gotta say, you gotta interpret constitutions as living documents. They gotta be flexible. This is why I love implied power so much. Any final comments or questions, changes? You know, um, uh, when, uh, when Kevin Banstra and uh, David Hevner in 2012 uh, wrote, <laughs> were on the Students Association and wrote the bylaws of 2012. Uh, they took they took a big step forward in terms of formalizing what the Students Association looked like. It was uh, very much more grassroots and sort of haphazard, if you will, before that. And for years, they've been seen sort of as the uh, I don't know as the as the flag bearers of of, of building up the Students Association. And so that's nine years, of, uh, that's, uh, yeah, nine years ago. And um, I think what you're doing here with these uh, improved bylaws is you're really taking another step into, uh, into recognizing how much the Students Association has grown and also in terms of formalizing the continuity of, of that growth and, and sort of building on past successes. Because um, yeah, right, a number of years ago, there was no, general manager and, and you didn't have all these uh, committees and tasks. And so what I see in these bylaws is more people get to have a say. And I think that's great. So uh, just that, that's exactly what we're going on. Thank, thank you for that. That means so much to us, to like not just to me and Natalie, but the whole team. That's really encouraging. Um, yeah, that is essentially like the bare bones, like one of the foundational points of why we're um, um, updating these bylaws, just not only to be more up to date, but to give more students the possibility to be represented in student government. Okay, um, if there's no more questions, we will now conduct the voting. So this is the fun part. Um, a quick reminder that only students who have paid the essay fee are allowed to vote. That should be all of you for the record. Um, students automatically pay the fee when they register. So it's it's really only staff and faculty who don't get to vote. Sorry, guys. But that's the way the Society's Act rolls, so we have to go with it. Um, okay, so here's how it's gonna work. So for those students who want to vote, um, you're going to want to open the participants window. It should be on the bottom of your screen. Um, and that should open up something on the right. Um, there you should be able to see a yes or no function. Um, so just click whichever option that you want to go for. Um, I'll just stop sharing my screen now. Um, students who want to abstain, just hit the go slower button. There's not really a button for abstention, so just hit that if you want to uh, abstain. Um, and um, don't be shy. Don't just like you know hit the abstention button because you don't feel like you have the right to hit yes, yes or no. You absolutely do have the right to hit yes or no. Um, so just feel free to go ahead. Um, is anyone having trouble seeing this? Do I need to explain it again? I have no idea what you mean. Okay, so um, step one. There's the participants um, button at the bottom of your screen. Do you see it? Yes? Okay, let me know if uh, anyone's having I just don't have my problems. glasses on. <laughs> okay, yeah, no worries. Um, so click the participants button. Something should open up on the right. It'll give like a list of all the people who are present at the meeting. And there should be a yes, no, go slower, go faster, et cetera. A um, bunch of those buttons. So just hit whichever button that you want to go for. And yeah, we'll go from there. So what's the exact, so it's just, so yes to the proposal or no to the proposal? Yes. Okay. yes. Oh my goodness, I forgot to <laughs> forgot to make the motion. I'm so sorry. But um, yeah, okay, so I'll do that right Adrian, now. Adrian, I, I, I just typed it in the chat. With the okay, motion. perfect. I will. Um, From you. <laughs> okay. I'll just clarify, like, yeah, I'll just read it out loud. Um, I move that we adopt the proposed 2021 bylaws, um, accept them, um, 
sorry. I move that the proposed 2021 bylaws be accepted by the King's University Students Association, becoming effective pending approval by the Alberta, Alberta Registrar with the following amendments and so on and so forth. I'll actually read the amendments out loud just for the people who are listening to this um, through recording and don't have the chat open. Um, so uh, amendment one, removal of uh, uh, section 5.4.3, which states that meeting may be held without notice if a quorum is met. Amendment number two, change section uh, 6.3, which states that uh, uh, to state that general manager will serve as a secretary or appoint one as required. Um, and the addition of section uh, 7.5.4, which would state, in the case of a director vacancy, the general counsel may, can appoint a member to the position by majority vote. We'll just give that a couple more seconds in case anyone um, is having in a, a bit of a crisis right now trying to decide, oh my gosh, do we approve these bylaws or not? And um, let me know um, if anyone's actually having trouble. Um, like if you still don't know what I'm talking about, like the participants button, yes, no, then yeah. So upon that uh, motion that I, um, that Natalie typed down that I just um, iterated, can I get a seconder for that? Seconded by Shay, thank you. Um, any, it doesn't, there doesn't seem to be any no's or abstentions, thank goodness. Um, but if anyone wants to like, yeah, there's no, there's no need for that. There's no one that's um, saying it anyways. But if you did vote no or, or abstention, you do have the option to have it like uh, explicitly recorded in the um, in the meeting minutes. So, okay, but the uh, motion has passed unanimously. Um, that concludes our only item of business. So thank you so much to all of you guys who voted. Um, the, yeah, the bylaws are now passed. They will become our actual bylaws once we send them to the registrar and knock on wood, they will accept it. <laughs> Um, I, I don't see any reason why they wouldn't, but anyways. Um, okay, so um, we will now move on to the next item on our agenda, which is the question period. So this is an opportunity for you guys to ask the essay any questions about anything. Um, you can do this either by typing it in or um, publicly or privately to me if you want your identity um, kept anonymous and that's per perfectly fine. Um, yeah, or you could just go out, um, go state your question verbally. Um, and uh, before anyone asks, no, we can't allow a statue of Mark Sandel in the level. Thought I'd just nip that right in the bud. Um, but hey. please, if you have any more questions, then please feel free to throw them in the chat or verbally iterate it. I think we have a basis for like our, our first amendment will state um, professors may have their um, likeness molded in the school grounds. Marble busts or something like that, I don't know. We have the budget for that if we uh, increase your taxes. So depends um, how far you're you're willing to go with this. I'm not entirely sure that the entire student population will accept uh, having higher fees just so that we can make busts of professors. Just well, not lot. with that attitude.
I don't think I see any other questions, Adrian. Nope. Doesn't look like it. So, um, and no one messaged me in private, as far as I know. Um, if I missed something, then please um, start waving your arms, letting me know, stop me in my tracks. But it doesn't look like there's any more questions. So, yeah, it looks like we're wrapping up uh, nicely here. Um, again, I just wanted to uh, express my gratitude and my team's gratitude for all of you showing up here. Um, it really means a lot to us to, you know, have people be aware and engaged in the things that we're doing. Um, I, I know it's not very exciting, but like I said, it's important and you guys recognize that and took the, the time out of your day to be a part of this. So with that being said, I move that we adjourn this meeting. May I get a second? Seconded by Jonas, thirded by Shay. Okay, wonderful. Um, so yeah, you guys are free to go. Um, <clears throat> just so you know, like I said in my email this morning, there is a full board meeting happening right after this one. Uh, we'll probably just take a quick like five, 10 minute break. I need one. So, um, but yeah, we'll just continue on with that. Um, so you're welcome to stay if you want, um, but otherwise, yeah, you're all free to go. Thank you guys so much. Okay. That's funny. It looks like York left. <laughs> I hope he's coming back. Um, yes, uh, five minute break sounds good. Okay, so thanks everyone. See you <clears throat> in five. That's a good That's point. A good point Adrian, Adrian. Just a heads up. I don't. Taylor's not coming, and I don't think Eliza is either. So, okay, they've both informed me they have nothing to say. So. Good to know. Okay, um, I'll be back in five and once we come back, I mean, that's only like, um, yeah, that'll only be like five more minutes to one o'clock. So this we can just kick around and just like talk about fun stuff until one o'clock. This is an open meeting, right? Oh yeah, no, you're, you're absolutely welcome open. to stay. Yeah. Okay. Love to see what's going on. Okay. Okay, wonderful. So Adrian, how did you find that picture that looks strikingly like Mark Sandel? Oh, um, I just found it on Instagram. I just like really just stumbled on it. I, yeah. I, I like a lot of um, history themed history pages. Meme. On, I was about to say yeah. that would happen on your Instagram probably. Oh yeah, no, 100%. Yeah. So that's where it came from. Okay. I just stumbled on it. I, I didn't edit it this time or anything like that. <laughs> no, I guessed. I was like, if he if he actually found something that looked like Mark, he'd probably put it up. Yeah. Um, and not mess with it. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Marble sandal. Yes, please. Their whole family.
Hey, Adrian. Yes. Uh, I just wanted to ask about the election process for the, they, they're called, you called them directors, right? Like the people who are representing different areas of the student body. Yep. Uh, what, what's the election process look like? We still haven't like figured out the nitty gritty details of that, but it'll essentially be something like that's happening in September. We're probably just going to use the same template that we use for um, first year rep elections. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah. Um, yeah, we would likely follow the same format as our executive elections in the spring, but just in the fall instead. Okay. And of course, because they're being elected as general directors, instead of all running for different positions, it would, it's essentially like a combination of our first year rep election and our executive elections, because they would essentially just have a big group of people run and the top six would be, or I guess four would be elected. Okay, cool. Did everyone have a good reading week? It happened. As good as it uh, could have been, I yeah. guess. Wasn't uh, necessarily a full break for me as as you'll find out in my report, but it was still, <laughs> yeah, it wasn't bad. It was better than nothing. Man, I hope George is coming back. <laughs> That's going to be awkward if he doesn't. He probably is. He didn't leave before you guys. He knows there's a meeting, so. Yeah. He probably will. Oh, yeah. Also, uh, in theory, if we're getting Vaudry or Sandal, can we please also have Dudiak? We'll have to see about that. Right. I'm I don't like know if he's the, um the philosophy majors. Would he? Do you think he'd be down for that idea? Oh, probably not. No, um, that's what I'm thinking. Money. He's, he's very humble. <laughs> yeah. I don't Sandal, think on the other hand, yeah. maybe. Well, yeah. I mean, we've been essentially building a cult of personality around him for the past three years. So why stop now, right? This is true. Go At all least. in. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. Well, I'm not sure if, uh, Jonas is back or Jenea, but let's just, um, get right to it. So do, 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 let me just pull up the full board meeting agenda. Thank you guys for sticking around here. Like, um, Madison, especially, <laughs> um, yeah, I know you just had to go through an hour of a really fun, uh, meeting and now we have to do another one. So, Let's get the show on the road. Um, so I call this full board meeting to order. The time is uh, one o'clock, exactly. Um, so first item on the agenda is the approval. So um, like the uh, special resolution meeting, the agenda for this um, should have been made um, public to all students uh, this morning and um, for uh, full board members last um, yet yesterday. So. If there are any uh, amendments that anyone would like to uh, suggest or recommend, then please do so now. Okay, well, um, I'm not hearing or seeing anything, so <clears throat> let's just move on. Um, so we have a number of full board reports here um, from students who sadly couldn't uh, make it. Um, to this one um, due to scheduling conflicts like most of them have classes something else going on at this time but they were kind enough to um, send us their um, reports in writing so i'll just go and read them off starting with the education students association um, let's see if i can just post or not i guess there's a word limit to uh how many letters you can throw in, in the uh, Zoom comments. So I'll just read it out loud. Um, so this is from um, Anna, uh, who's the ETSA president, and from Caleb, who's the ETSA vice president. 
So uh, the, the Education Students Association continues its work seeking to promote meaningful relationships between students, faculty, staff, and the community while cultivating quality pre-service teacher professional training. On January the 25th, 2021, we successfully concluded our election for next year's second year representatives. We have welcomed to the team two returning members and three new members who will officially begin their respective roles on May the 1st, 2021. Education students are out on practicum currently, soaking in observation and teaching opportunities in the classroom. This marks a season where EDSA's operations gear toward planning and solidifying the graduation celebration for the end of term, as well as looking to the future as we begin to arrange professional development opportunities for the 2021 to 22 fall semester. Another key activity we are engaging in is the transfer of knowledge and skills from the second year ETSA members to the first year ETSA members who will be leading things next year. This process allows for consistency and fluidity in a program that is two years in length. And that's the report submitted by Anna and Caleb. Um, so obviously they're not here right now, but if you're listening to this recording, thank you for that report. Um, moving on down to the agenda. Um, York still doesn't seem to be back. So for now, we'll just skip through him. And if he comes back, then we can fulfill his report. Um, and that's perfectly fine. Adrian, I'm sorry to stop you. I, I just yeah. didn't get a seconder for the agenda and we didn't do the approval of the minutes. <laughs> oh, is that? Oh, my goodness. Sorry about that. So There's my nice Robert's nice. rules again. <laughs> All right. Can I get a seconder for the uh, uh, approval of the agenda? Seconded. Okay, perfect. Um, and um, as for the meeting minutes, we'll just do that in our normal, um, our next normal um, executive board meeting. Okay. Du, 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 du. Moving on to the Chronicle. And again, um, a Annika and Rachel unfortunately couldn't make it, but they submitted a written report, which I'll read out to you. On behalf of Annika Stork and myself, below are our updates and report for the Chronicle. Uh, Annika and I approve of the proposed Takusa bylaw changes. Woohoo! Um, we are planning two more editions of the newspaper, a regular edition in March and the satirical ironical in April. As always, Takusa is more than welcome to submit articles to reach King students slash faculty. We appreciated Adrian submitted articles in the past several editions. Uh, we have been working with Dr. Philip Mingay, our faculty advisor, uh, the Department of English, and the Dean of the Faculty of Arts to develop a plan for the transition to new student editors for the 2021 to 22 school year. We will keep the uh, Takusa informed of any structural changes to the Chronicle moving forward and welcome your feedback and or suggestions. Sincerely, Rachel Boone, student co-editor of the Chronicle. So yeah, uh, Rachel and or Annika, if you're listening to this recording, thank you so much for that report. That's really awesome. Um, moving on to Ballyhoo. Um, yep, so uh, Liam and Emily, again, couldn't uh, make it, unfortunately. They did submit a uh, uh, brief report, which I'll read out now. We're making progress with Ballyhoo with no issues to report and no additional assistance needed at this time. So thank you, Liam and Emily, if you're listening to this. Okay, on to executive reports. So um, from my end, uh, two Fridays ago, I had a really enjoyable meeting with the president of Redeemer University in Ontario. His name was Sam, really pleasant guy to talk to. Um, I had no idea someone could be so nice, genuinely. And um, our conversation was essentially just uh, both of us reaching out to one another for the first time, like talking about some of the issues that we've had to tackle this year, because Redeemer is very similar to King's um, in structure um, and population. So like Ambrose, it's a private Christian university, and it's got roughly the same uh, population as us. It's pretty small. Um, one of the highlights, I guess I could say, that Sam told me about, which I found really interesting, was how they do um, elections. So uh, from my understanding, um, so over here at King's, we do our student elections essentially like all in one go, or the vast majority of it is all in one go in March. So like the president, VP internal, external student services, that's all handled um, in a single election at the end of March. How they do things at Redeemer is that they each have like one week intervals and they split their elections into just individual positions. So for instance, you could have the, at the beginning of March, you could have elections for president. 
And then the week after, you'll have elections for VP internal. And the week after, external, and then student services, and so on and so forth. And the idea behind that is that um, if you say you're running for president and you lose, um, you could potentially run again for VP internal or external or whatever. So um, if you lose the position that you're going for, you're not automatically kicked out of the race is what I'm essentially saying. And I thought that's, that was a very interesting um, way they have it set up there. And I think there's some other universities around here who do something similar to that. Um, at any rate, it's just food for thought right now. It's definitely too late to even consider doing something like this for um, this year's election cycle. But I just wanted to throw that out there as food for thought. <clears throat> um, and yeah, the the meeting was very amicable. Like I said, like um, we plan to hopefully reach out um, again, like um, next year, whoever the president happens to be then um, they can continue on like building a mutual relationship with them. I think there's so much that we could learn from each other's universities just because we're in so similar positions. Um, okay, and I was in meetings with IT um, all week last week. So I'm part of the ERP slash SIS, um, um, I guess, group, uh, communications group. Um, and what their um, essential um, goal is, is to reform or introduce a new student information system. Um, so essentially how students um, get information like um, academics, courses, um, all that, um, sort of like Moodle, um, but just more updated. And so I, I was in uh, meetings, I, I calculated how many hours I spent, it was like 12 or something like that in total. Um, where I just like, you know, represented student voice, like, oh yeah, I think students will like this. I think students will see this as a potential breach of privacy, maybe. Uh, maybe we can reword it to sound better. Just like little things like that. And I think it's awesome that they reached out to see if they could get a student perspective because yeah, that stuff obviously like concerns students. So um, that, was, that, that was nice. Um, I'm also in an upcoming meeting with President Humphreys today. Um, Natalie will also be attending. Um, yeah, Presmo reached out to um, us a while ago, like asking for, um, asking to be introduced to Natalie, essentially. And I think that's a, it's a great opportunity and, you know, interested in seeing what the essay is up to. And um, Presmo and I meet on a bi-weekly basis, so once every two weeks. So this is just, um, um, this time around, we're just inviting Natalie. So it should make for a, a fun conversation. Um, there'll also be a, um, there's a general faculty council meeting later today, um, which I plan to attend, represent the SA. Um, it should be short. They're just um, like us, actually. They have a special resolution that they're trying to adopt, I, I think, um, is what I could piece out from the email. Um, so that should be interesting. Um, and there's also a um, Senate meeting um, tonight at seven, from, from seven to nine, I believe. So it's a very busy day, but it is what it is. Um, so I'll leave, I'll let you guys be updated um, after I'm done with those. But yeah, essentially that's it from my end of uh, reports. Does anyone have any questions or comments? Okay, wonderful, let's move on. Um, <clears throat> so next up is VP internal reports. So Shay um, unfortunately had class at this time, so she couldn't make it and that's totally fine. Um, she did submit a written report, which is awesome. So I'll just read it out loud like I did for the uh, previous ones. So <clears throat> um, I created an advocacy document with the internal advocacy committee. This consists of student concerns put forward by our IAC and is currently in, um, in its last revision and will be submitted later this week for discussion with the Dean of Students, Megan Veens. Um, I've been working on election packages, timeline and planning in correlation with uh, general manager, Natalie Wallace and uh, VP student Ser services, Amanda Coote. Um, Past GFC and Senate meetings have brought light to student concerns that were raised in our advocacy document, such as scholarships and financial aid, as well in correlation with the president, our new system for a full board and general counsel coming this fall was introduced. Lastly, we're moving forward um, in our mental health task force in creating particular tasks and evaluations that are to be completed in light of the Bell Let's Talk grant. So that's it. Um, if you have any uh, questions for Shay, just send them on to her. Uh, now moving on to VP external. So uh, Jonas, do you have anything to report? I haven't got a whole lot. Um, 
you're already aware of the the meeting with the minister I had was a week a week ago. Uh, that went fairly well. Uh, good news from that is, um, although it's sounding like McKinsey with the Alberta 2030 review is still recommending a deregulated tuition model for the province, uh, the minister has made it quite clear that he is not on board with that. He he does believe tuition does need to be regulated, um, which is a win for us because that's the big biggest thing that we've been trying to advocate for in the Alberta 2030 process. Um, I sent out an email with all the notes from that meeting to everyone if you'd like to review them. Um, he, his, I asked about the whole um, the whole residence policies question and his, his answer wasn't super clear, but uh, that's something that I'll have to keep working on. Um, and I talked to you about that already, I think, Adrian. Um, yeah, and um, internally with my work on the residence policies, yeah, uh, Dean Veens told me that they're going to be reviewing them over the summer. Uh, and Sarah Heimer, because she has been um, a big input in uh, helping form our approach to residence policies over the last, well, since I was president. Um, she She's still uh -huh. keen on helping out with that. So um, I recommended her uh, to the Dean to assist in the revision process over the summer, as well as whoever my successor will be on that issue. And the ASEC AGM is going to be coming up next month on the 20th and 21st. I'm not sure. I imagine that'll probably just be remotely, but uh, it depends on how things go with restrictions. It's subject to change. And finally, uh, the ASEC, this is the, the most important part. <laughs> the ASEC February newsletter was just released. There's some big news in there because I was declared as the leader of the month. So um, that, that is my, my big achievement this month. <laughs> yeah, I just saw that. Congrats. Bravo. That's all I've got. Thanks. Cool. <clears throat> Any uh, questions, comments for Jonas? Yes, Natalie. Jonas, I think you need to tell Annika and Rachel, and we need to make note of that in our paper that one of our leaders has been acknowledged as leader of the month with our provincial organization. I think that's great news to share. I like that idea. Mm. We'll print it I'll, on the I'll front pages. It. Just make sure it's not on the ironical. <laughs> then people think it's a joke. Yeah, uh, for the ironic, we'll have a Takusa declared worst student group of the year. <laughs> okay. Um, anything else for Jonas? Okay, cool. Um, let's move on then to VP Student Services. So, Amanda, do you have anything to report? Yeah. So, um, as of last Thursday, our healthcare company had still not received the list of winter admit, admitted students from the registry office. I did send them an email today asking why it wasn't sent uh, at the end of January, like it should have been, um, and why it still hasn't been sent now. Um, so I'm waiting to hear back on that issue. But uh, Natalie, did you hear anything about that? Well, I think I copied you in that I emailed Alan directly and said, please send the list. So supposedly someone is doing that from the registrar's office, but that was an e that was two weeks ago now. Yeah, and yeah, I did receive I communication. From we speak is that as of the end of last week when they sent us the information on the insurance, they had not uh, received it yet. So we are working on that. Um, this is very unfortunate because that means that all of our students who were admitted in the winter semester who are already getting the short end of our healthcare stick with only eight months of healthcare coverage as opposed to 12 um, are now being shrunk down to six, which is very unfortunate. I'm hoping we're not gonna get a ton of pushback on that, um, but there is definitely a potential for it. I'm at least glad that this is happening in the winter as opposed to the fall, because at least in the winter, there's a lot low, a lesser number of students who have been admitted as this being their first semester. Um, we sent a, a follow-up email to the registry then because you said that was two weeks ago? I sent one this morning. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Um, in addition for our healthcare, they are prepping the actual contract for us to sign, but then um, 
coming up in the next couple of weeks. Hopefully we will actually be signing ourselves into a three-year contract with WeSpeak um, with a fixed rate for that three years so that they cannot increase beyond what is reasonable for us. And luckily they, in their negotiations, they've been able to meet um, a decent number in terms of an increase that doesn't uh, increase too much for our students that it freaks them out in having to pay so much more for their healthcare coverage. Um, and finally, in terms of our elections, uh, social media and stuff like that, all that rollout, um, elections will uh, likely start next week in order, uh, in terms of rolling out the election packages and things like that. Um, but this week and the beginning of next week, we will be focusing on um, laying out the current um, office members and um, laying out their exact duties so that people are aware of that before nomination packages come out. Awesome. And I mean, you can use the um, bylaws that we just passed as like a framework for like the rules and responsibilities. Obviously you can like um, dumb it down a bit so it's not as tedious, but you can use yeah, that. I've, I've got all of those documents ready to go. Um, Perfect. So we'll just be rolling them out periodically throughout the next couple of weeks. I mean, there's only four positions now, which kind of makes that a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. um, so likely Tuesday and Thursday of this week and next week, we'll roll okay. those out. And yeah, we have election discussion as one of our items of business. So we, um, we'll have a more developed conversation about that pretty soon here. Um, but for now, are there any other questions, comments for uh, Amanda? Okay. Yeah, that is really um, unfortunate, the whole um, insurance thing. Hopefully that gets resolved soon. Um, okay, uh, moving on to first year representatives. So Jenea, do you have anything to report? No, not really. <laughs> Sounds good. Any questions or comments for Jenea? Okay. Let's just move on then. Gina, I'll see if I can give you something to do. Um, like um, uh, the ERP SIS thing is done now, but if something like that comes up again, then it, I'll, I'll talk to you. Let's see if there's something that we can do. Okay, sounds if good. You'd be, if you'd be um, down for it, obviously. Yeah, no, that sounds good. Okay, awesome. Um, okay, moving on to staff reports. So Natalie, do you have anything to report? Yeah, so uh, I reduced my hours last week while everyone was on reading week, thought it was good from a variety of friends, but um, CRA and I, you know, we're in a dance still. I'm trying to now fax them because it's 1995 and that's how they receive information. Um, I now have all of the information and I have been an authorized user, um, but now I'm trying to actually update our directors. It's really challenging to connect with them. We are still, and Mark, maybe you can shed some light on this. We're still trying to figure out uh, tax returns, how they were done um, in the last little while. Uh, Onyx, our accounting firm, is looking into how we can file for what seemed to be missing uh, taxes from the last number of years. Number? Uh, it seems to me, sorry, go ahead, Mark. I don't, I don't. Okay. So so it seems that um, with the finance department having been responsible for our finances, um, the one thing that wasn't done, because it is actually separate on SAGE, which is their accounting program, as its own entity, the SA. So we were not ruled up with the university's taxes, which means we have none reported. So we are now looking to rectify that and update it accordingly. So um, it looks like our accountants have a plan with that going forward. Uh, so uh, we will get all caught up and our 2020 uh, tax return will be a lot more interesting. Um, I'm currently getting all of the members, students' names uploaded into our Simply Voting program and preparing for the upcoming elections. Um, and I'm also preparing an outstanding receipts list that we can forward out to all of you lovely executives, make sure we're all up to date as we head into the financial year end. I met with Level Committee and Madison and Becca and had a great conversation about where 
things are with them and all the hard work they're doing to keep our coffee house operating in a pandemic. Um, reached out to Advanced Education to get further clarification on IAIs and the Societies Act versus the PSLA. I have not heard back, but I have a call in with the senior advisor there. And um, yeah, I was doing the follow up with We Speak, uh, both on the getting a little bit of movement on the contract um, and asking registrar why we don't have a list sent to them so that our students can be covered. And that is uh, amongst some other random stuff. Oh, and finalizing the details on the publications money that's being moved into a two, uh, sorry, two scholarships and one bursary for COVID relief, uh, as I said to all of the executives recently. So that's the extra funds that publications had when we switched uh, where publications is sitting now, which is now with the SA, we had some overage that uh, <clears throat> we thought was best used to put into back to the students. And uh, that's what we're doing. Any other, any questions? <clears throat> Doesn't look like it. Thank you, Natalie. Um, Moving on down the uh, staff reports list. Um, yeah, so um, Taylor and Eliza um, aren't here. So Amanda, did you say that they had anything to report? No, like I said, Taylor's been working with me on getting everything prepped for our pre-election and then election advertising materials. Um, and that's really all they've had for the last little bit. Okay. <clears throat> awesome. Um, Okay, uh, moving on to Level Coffee House. So Madison, do you have anything to report? Um, nothing too crazy, no. Um, I asked Becca if she wanted anything to be said on her end. Um, she's obviously not here. And she just wanted to, again, request that whoever's in charge of the, like there's just the closet stuff in the back kind of zone we get the level and the fireplace on the stage it would be great if we could get those put away somewhere else um but really that's kind of it like gonna have new specials coming pretty soon um that's basically it i don't know nothing too crazy Okay, awesome. Thank you, Madison. And um, Amanda, could you uh, jump on that? Um, just uh, helping out like with the storage and like the fireplace. And um, of course, let me know if you need any help um, in that regard. But it sounded like um, when I last talked to you, like Taylor had it under control. So just um, yeah. it, it will get done. Taylor, yeah, Taylor and Eliza are handling that one. Um, it was just okay. with it being so cold, that door would not open. Mm -hmm. So. Okay, um, yeah, um, I'll reach out to them and see if we can get that done um, this week because it should have been done a while ago. So I'm, I apologize for that, uh, Madison. Um, so okay. we'll, we'll, we'll get it done. Okay, um, awesome. Okay, um, the next um, item on the agenda is um, the business of the day, which is the election update. So Madison, I would actually invite you to stay for a little while because I want to, I want to explore to see if there's any potential like possibility if we can incorporate um, the level coffee house into this um, scheme. But essentially what we're trying to do is increase the hype about the upcoming elections as much as possible. Um, last year's voter turnout was, um, according to my memory, it was somewhere around 28%, which isn't bad, um, historically speaking. That's pretty much of, like around average, but we want to like, we want to, one of our huge goals this year is to make the essay like fundamentally stand out, right? And be part of the student experience here at King's. And elections are just one of those huge opportunities to do that. Um, Cause we want it, this might sound bad, but we want it like in the face of people as much as possible. We want everyone to be aware that they're happening, that their vote matters. And we want to get that voter turn up uh, going up. So I've already reached out to, um, uh, we, we've already been discussing this like Amanda, um, just like 
advertising on our social media pages, uh, potentially putting like posters up, just things like that to get the word out there. And um, I was wondering if like we could do something like potentially with a level coffee house, like if they can just like even just something as simple as sticking up a sign that says, yeah, essay elections are happening pretty soon here, just right up on the kiosk there, um, just to help us get the word out. Would you be open for something like that? Sorry, uh, yes, yeah, uh, I don't know really what it would look like, um, but I'm sure like me and Becca would be down to like discuss that. Okay, um, yeah, if we like come up with the ideas, we can just like reach out to you through um, Amanda or Natalie and see if there's something that we could do like with the coffee house or even just the level space that could somehow advertise yeah elections are happening i know there's not a whole lot of students on campus right now so it won't be as effective but still mm -hmm. better than nothing well yeah like becca will do the black like the chalkboard with the i guess that'll be in april or will that be in march march um yeah, the elections okay. are happening at the um last week of march so the 22nd i believe uh, that's okay. the campaigning period is what I mean, not the actual voting. Um, the, the voting happens okay. on like the last couple of days of March there. Um, but okay. we essentially want to start advertising early March. That's what we're trying okay, to do. Okay, yeah. Here. Becca's going to change the blackboard like next week because we'll have a new special. So I'll send her a message and ask if she'd want, because we have like the board on the left that has the actual drink specials and then the one on the other side is kind of just whatever. So maybe she could put something on the blackboard about just like election dates or something like that. Okay. Um, yeah, that would be awesome. I'll send her a message and I'll just direct her to you if she has more questions about it. Yeah, it sounds good. And uh, Natalie just threw in a couple of suggestions there in the comments. So if like you can take those up with Beck and see what she thinks if she'd be open to anything like that at all. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I'll I'll pass it along. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Natalie, is there anything um, anything else super like crucial that I'm missing in terms of election discussions? Uh, the only thing I wanted to highlight for everyone here was just so they could start to spread the word some of the important dates coming up. So I know Amanda's looking to post the nomination packages next week and she's going to start her campaign, uh, the, the, the kind of promotion of the elections by highlighting each of the executives on Instagram and talking a little bit about their their current role and what they do to try and give a little more context to you know just a written job description. Uh, we'll post up the nomination packages so those who are interested in running for a position have until Thursday March 18th at 3 p.m. I'm going to put all this in the minutes um, to uh, send me their nomination package. I'm the I'll be the chief returning officer for the election so um, and Shaylin would be the DR, the deputy returning officer, but in the case that she is um, planning to run in the election, we will require a new deputy returning officer. I personally vote for Jonas since he's been through this many times and is not running because, you know, he's no longer going to be a student. Well, or a very, very part-time student. Um, and then we'll have our mandatory candidates meeting at 5 p.m. I put together a little bit of information for that. So we'll present, I'll be presenting a little bit of a slideshow talking a little bit about what each of these roles uh, encompass, but more importantly, what qualities we look for in an executive and what, what it means to be an executive, like um, kind of what your realm of, of responsibilities are so we don't have people like I'm gonna change how English classes are run and you know that's great but you, you don't actually have jurisdiction over that so you know just making sure people understand what it means to be an executive and, and an advocate. Um, we'll be doing a video forum on March 22nd at 2 p.m. and people will be submitting responses to questions. Uh, of course this year with all of COVID, we're, we're pretty restricted with what we can do as far as gatherings go. Um, campaigning is from the 22nd after that video forum, forum until March 28th. So we're gonna be encouraging our, uh, those campaigning, use our social media and our website. Um, I'm open to any other ideas people have on how to kind of promote our election to others and, and to get our, our, our campaign, our candidates, sorry, out there. Um, and then voting begins March 31st at 3 p.m. 
and uh, that goes into, oh, sorry, Monday, March 29th, sorry, until Wednesday, March 31st at 3 p.m. We'll be using Simply Voting again, and we'll hope to get out to everyone. And then, of course, on April 1st, we'll have our introductory meeting, which will be mandatory for our new uh, elected, newly elected, and our executive installment meeting on the 15th of April, our, one of our last executive board meetings. So it's going to get moving next week and it'll be busy until then. So does anyone have any questions about the elections? Also, uh, be kind to me. It's my first elections here. So I'll, I, I'm definitely uh, appreciative of all the expertise sitting on the executive this year that can help walk through this. Um, and I really encourage you to go out and uh, if anything, just encourage other people to come and ask questions about what it means. If you see people interested in student governance and what that, uh, what kind of role they can play. And I'm happy to, I'm available to answer anyone's questions. Absolutely, yep. Thank you, Natalie. And uh, yeah, don't worry about this being your first time. Like we, le like you said earlier, like Shay, Joe and have been here for quite a while, so they know how the whole thing goes. So they'll be here to guide you easily. Yeah, as to the dates, I find it kind of funny that, um, I, it was Shay who set this up, I believe. Um, April 1st being the date that the um, the uh, winners of the election are announced. That would be pretty uh, terrifying to hear, oh, you won. Oh, April Fools. <laughs> that would just be a little unfortunate. Anyways, um, any other further questions? I'm just curious about one thing here. Um, in uh, in 1314, there was an MOU with ETSA about a fee structure that I don't see in the um, in the bylaws anymore. Did did anything change? Oh, that <laughs> that's actually a, yeah, it's yeah, it's actually a, a topic of discussion that we're going um, over with ETSA right now. So the um, the MOU you stated that there's one from 1314. The current one is from uh, 2015, I believe. So we might be talking about the same thing. We might be talking about um, something different, but essentially um, it's, yeah, from what I hear, it's the same, it's a similar idea. It's a memorandum of understanding underlying the fee structure. That's still in, the, uh, in effect right now. We're currently like, um, we're, we're talking with that. So right now, see if we could rework it in a way that, um, um, you know, reflects um, what, present, the, what the present situation is like. Um, but that's, yeah, it's still in effect. I have, I have no real preference on the matter. I was involved in the review. There was a, it was signed in, I'm doing this all from memory. It's something like 2012, 2011. Mm -hmm. 2011, yeah. And then there, the, in the MOU was uh, the aim of a, a review after three years. Seeger mm -hmm. and I did the review in, in 14, I think. And, and maybe there was an update in 2015. Uh, could be. Uh, yeah. by Brenda Hansen and the team. But, uh, but, but I was just curious. But, um, yeah, so I guess you're still talking about, so that's the answer. Um, because of course the, the extended question would be, well, what about uh, now the business uh, group? And what about other things? And how do they want to, how, how are fees allocated there for, for every department that's, of Kings? It's a really good question, Mark. And that was part of my question when I came on board this year, because I couldn't quite understand how these different structures worked and precedent. So we began looking a little closer at it, especially with the bylaw review. So just so you know, those memorandum of understanding sit under our policies and procedures, never our bylaws. They were always sitting under policy and procedures as an attachment. So we are, uh, last year's group increase is setting an increase for SA fees for next year that's already passed. And so when we were looking at it, we thought 40% is actually quite a bit of money uh, for this group to, with the increase that we're, we're doing. So, uh, and then I started looking further and just in terms of how the fees were set because the finance department used to regulate all of the money. So they just, they just split it like that, but they managed the money. They're no longer managing any of the funds for the SA or for EDSA. So then it was a question that hence that whole piece of the standing committees of EDSA or LBA or any of those organizations wanting to do separate things but request some of their student fees to be put towards it is that they would act as a standing committee of the students association and request funds to support those activities. So 
in principle, they, they would be getting the same kind of money, um, just that they would have to present a budget to us much like we were the finance department as opposed to, right? Right. I don't know if that makes sense. It so does make the same sense. for the, the leader business association or any other groups that are looking to access SA funds. I think, I think uh, that always had my, if, if I did have a preference, it'd be something like that mm-hmm. because you want to account for other groups that want similar funding. Um, the previous Dean of Education was Lloyd Dembour. Many of you will know him, of course. Uh, before that, it was, uh, I think he's still emeritus professor, John Hull. And it was John Hull in whatever it was, 2012, um, who quite uh, ardently fought with his students for a piece of the pie, if you will. And not a, uh, a piece of the pie, I guess this is just the context I'm telling you, uh, not a piece of the pie that was that could go up and down with the annual whims of a different uh, executive. And mm-hmm. so I think that's the, the piece of security they were looking for yeah. back then was an agreed upon percentage. So they just knew- yeah, that, that's, that's huge, right? That's uh, part of the um, original um, intent of the memorandum of understanding is to make sure that, yeah, like say um, a future essay comes in and they don't really like ETSA that much and they just like completely don't, uh, they don't give them any money or they give them much reduced money. So they wanted something that ensures that they get a set amount of, of money. And that's not something that we like really want to replace. Like we, we, we don't want to run into that problem again, right? Where like we have a future essay that potentially does that. Um, so that's one of the tricky things about um, revisiting the memorandum of, of understanding. It's how to ensure that that's still reflected, that they're still protected and that their autonomy in that sense is still being kept. Um, but yeah, that, that's part of the reason why this is still an ongoing discussion with them because we still are working out how exactly to do that. And I think it's it's no longer a memorandum of understanding per se. It's a terms of reference as a standing committee, if that's how they're choosing to fall under us, because um, the memorandum of understanding is between the university, the SA, and, a, and the student, like the EDSA, which um, given that these are SA funds, the university has no jurisdiction over SA membership fees as a society, right? So they can, I guess, in principle support it, but they don't have any actual official jurisdiction over those funds. So it's really a terms of reference we need to establish with EDSA as far as the use of those funds. Um, And that would be the point of it is to ensure that there's some continuity and that there's some established terms that can be revisited like you had kind of put in your original MOU, um, but that they'd be visiting those terms of reference every four to five years, but that every year they're not asking for the same money um, in principle, they're given that money, if that makes sense. Yeah, you guys got it. Yeah, um, if you have any more like um, questions that you want us to like break down in detail, like we just did with the MOU, then that's that's um, perfectly fine. Like I would totally be willing to sit with you for like an hour and just like go through all this. Um, for now, let's just move on um, to the rest of the uh, agenda. Um, and if, yeah, if you want to like stay after the meeting, Mark, and just ask, ask us some more questions, then I'd be totally fine just staying. Um, I don't really have anywhere else to go right now. So um, that concludes our um, item of new business, which is um, the election update. Unless I missed something, Natalie, um, just let me know. Um, but for now, let's just move on to question period. So does anyone have any, like, basically the same thing with the... Uh, <laughs> the uh, special uh, resolution meeting that we just had. And ones that we can answer in a short time span. Okay, awesome. Let's just move on here. Um, Okay, feedback. Amanda, have you received any feedback from the website? Two requests for uh, statues of Mark Sandal on the level. We're at five now. Someone really wants this. Someone is really trying to get the essay to, uh, it might be Professor Sandal himself, who knows? I can see him doing something like that. wouldn't surprise me. He did tell me a while ago that he supports the cult of personality developing around him, so it it very well could be. It very well could be him. Mm. Yeah, honestly not sure who wants it more, him or his students, so. Yeah, I mean, I would be down to um, use essay fees to um, purchase a statue of Sandal, but I also don't want to get impeached. So I think it's going to have to be a hard no on that one, unfortunately. You don't want to make that your uh, your last act as president? Oh, yeah. 
You will definitely get the history student vote and the PhD vote. And a lot of the English majors. <laughs> but that yeah, was but all everyone, our feedback for this week. Everyone else will just be like, oh no, Adrian, no. <laughs> um, okay, anyways. Interesting feedback. We'll see if um, we'll see if it continues. I'm, I'm quite interested to see like whoever's doing this. I'm quite interested to see how long they're willing to go until we finally address it. It seems to have been about once a week since we opened this suggestion box. So okay. interesting, very interesting. Um, might have to do some sleuthing like Sherlock Holmes and like analyze the details of like the grammar that they use to finally track down whoever is doing this. Um, but anyways, that's the only feedback we got. So um, next item on the agenda is the adjournment. So I would like to move uh, to adjourn this meeting. May I get a second? Okay, seconded and thirded, perfect. Awesome, so you guys are good to go. Thank you so much for staying for the past like hour and 45 minutes that this has now been. Um, you're all free to go, unless you have any more questions that you like, I would be totally fine to stay here and answer them. So, yeah. Um, Okay, yeah, you're all good to go. Thank you so much. And uh, have a great day. Yeah. See ya. Hey, guys. Hey, Sorry what's to, up? Sorry to bother you with such a lengthy- Oh, no, time. don't don't worry about it. I We love getting like students to like, actually be like committed and asking questions like this. Um, just one sec, I do have to <laughs> use the washroom. Um, so I'll just go and do that. But Natalie, feel free to you, tackle. You can probably stop recording your meeting now if you want. That's right, yeah. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs>